big blue go live button. And we're live. Welcome to the People's Guide to Publishing Podcast. Sorry, were you waiting on me there? <laughs> Our first ever live edition. There may be some bumps. <laughs> Probably not. But so we're going to do something a little bit different this week where we have a live interview guest. But for those not familiar, the People's Guide to Publishing stemmed from the book of the same name, published in 2018, and became the ongoing pursuit of more and more information about innovation in publishing, learning from our mistakes, setting a better future. And so, who are you? I, oh, yes, I forgot we haven't done this in some time. I am Joe Beale, the uh, author and founder and CEO of Microcosm Publishing. And I'm Ellie Blue. I'm the Vice President and Marketing and Editorial Director of Microcosm. Mm -hmm. And we are a 26-year-old um, wow. small press of in based in Portland, Oregon, and Cleveland, Ohio. And we have, uh, I don't know, 20 some employees. 26. Mm -hmm. One for every year. <laughs> it, it, it works out that way just at this moment. Wild. So you can find us on the web at microcosm.pub, on Twitter at, at microcosm, at Instagram at microcosm underscore pub, and on Facebook at microcosm publishing. And, and you can hit subscribe to hear more of these podcasts. And who is our guest this week? This week, our guest is Sarah High. She is the Senior Partnerships Director, is that right, for bookshop.org, which is a very cool new tech innovation that has been um, perhaps disrupting book selling. And we're going to talk to her about the future of book selling. Mm -hmm. Hi, Sarah. Hey, thanks so much for having me, y'all. Uh, and Sarah, you're joining us from Philadelphia, from New York. From Brooklyn, New York. From Brooklyn, New York. I don't know why I thought Philly, but there's I a love little Philly bit too. <laughs> city. Um, there's a little bit of a time lag in the episode, so you can just use that as a moment of that if you're listening. Mm -hmm. So Sarah, can you tell us, um, or first I'll say how we met. So we were at PNBA, the regional trade show in Portland, and I was walking around trying to promote the software microcosm is building working lit, and I was giving everybody um, cards, and I was very excited to find a bookshop table, and Sarah was one of the people behind it, and we instantly bonded over being in the tech and book worlds together and decided to talk more and um yeah it's super fun uh, a lot of people in publishing don't talk a lot about um how things could be different and it was it's very fun to talk about how things could be different with sarah sarah how did you get into what's 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 your story with getting involved in bookshop and the tech side of publishing Sure. Um, well, first, Ellie, I just wanted to say that I was also um, fangirling when I met you and was like, I've seen her in jail on the web, and this is so, such a cool moment. I can't believe she's at my table. So it was really exciting. Um, geeked out on that for quite a bit. But uh, so I first, I first got into the book world when I, so I moved to New York in 2017, and I cold applied to a bookstore in Manhattan called Book Culture on 114 in Broadway near my house on 136 in Broadway. So it was really nice, close to home on Columbia's campus. So I um, started book selling there in early 2017, and then was a manager and bookseller there for about two and a half years. And I transitioned into publishing um, because, you know, as much as I loved book selling and being on the floor and getting to see the kind of front facing world of, of publishing, I wanted to get on the back end of things a little bit more. So um, applied to Catapult Soft School and Counterpoint Presses as a marketing intern for their um, publishing internship program. And I got the internship and started working there in 2018, I think it was 2018. Time is blurring together, as y'all know, and I'm sure you can that. relate. Um, <laughs> so I worked there for six, seven months, I believe, while I was bookselling, working seven days a week. It was a lot, uh, but it was great because I was getting, you know, front and back end of publishing. Um, and then one day, 
uh, Andy Hunter approached me, I guess it was 2019 then, because in the fall of 2019, or rather August of 2019, Andy Hunter was like, hey, you're a bookseller. You've been working hard here. I'm opening this new, you know, I'm starting this new program called bookshop.org. And I think you would be great as a sort of bookseller liaison between how the site works technologically and how booksellers need it to work. And um, you can sort of be the, the translator between the two. Um, and I was, of course, like, well, this is really exciting and, and scary, too. So let me think about it. Took a week to think about it because I was also applying to other places. And all my friends and family were like, this sounds really cool. Um, and I talked to mostly book industry folks, too, and booksellers. Um, and I think that was really important because as, you know, with my bookseller hat on, I was like, what is this new crazy thing? It it seems scary. Bookshop.org, you know, felt a little, I was a little skeptical, to be honest. But I'm really glad that I had the right people um, to talk to. And they were like, Sarah, you got to go for it. This seems like a really cool opportunity. So went back to Andy and I started at bookshop.org in uh, late August of 2019. Oh, yeah. And we did a previous episode about Bookshop when Bookshop was pretty brand new. But in case mm -hmm. our viewers haven't um, watched that one, how would you describe Bookshop to someone who is not in, already familiar? Yeah. Uh, Bookshop.org is an e commerce platform built explicitly to support local independent bookstores. Um, it is a site that mostly sells books, but our sole distributor is Ingram. So we do sell some non-book items, but our, our main mission is to help booksellers sell more books, whether um, using Bookshop as their sole form of e-commerce or using Bookshop in addition to whatever they're already doing in terms of online sales. So in layman's terms, uh, it's a site where if you're not supporting your, your local bookstore first and foremost, you should check out bookshop.org because you should be shopping with your local bookstore, but if you're not, this is where you need to be shopping. Not Amazon, not Barnes & Noble, not Target for your books, that's bad. Bookshop is the place to, to shop for books online if you're not supporting your local indie, so. And how exactly does that work? Like how does Bookshop, because I mean, I remember when I first heard of Bookshop, people were like, this is, we'll compete with our bookstore. How, how does it like help the bookstores rather than hurt them? Yeah, great question. Uh, so by design, we give away most of the profits that we make on the site. So it's amazing that we're making money. Uh, most of our money comes from ads and non-bookseller sales on the site. So anyone can be an affiliate with us. Um, but to help support bookstores and not compete with them. We do encourage our users to try to find their local bookstore first and foremost by going to our map. So there is a really cool bookstore map on the site um, where you can enter your zip code and find all the local bookstores in your area who are signed up on Bookshop. Click their shop from there and you will support them in all of your purchases um, by anything you buy on the site. So. Um, definitely want to improve the ways that we're steering the site users to the map and to discovering new bookstores on the site because there are about, you know, 1,300, which is amazing. I'm very happy about that. Uh, but definitely want it to be seen as a supplemental place to buy books online rather than a competitor. Um, something I always like to remind booksellers is that bookshop customers are not the customers who are supporting your store first and foremost. Those customers are already supporting your store and they don't need to buy on Bookshop because they're already your loyal customers. They're already buying online through you or shopping directly through you. Um, Bookshop customers are the ones who are maybe shopping on Amazon or Target for their books and they're like, this doesn't seem right. This doesn't feel like I should be doing it, but maybe I don't have a local indie. Maybe my indie's really far. Um, maybe I don't you know, I just don't know how to buy books sustainably online. Bookshop is for those customers who are trying to be a little more so socially conscious um, and who want to make the switch between buying their books from a big Amazon company um, and want to start giving back to their community and supporting local bookstores. So 
Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can and get a little so, verbose yeah, in these. <laughs> yeah, no, it's good. Um, so we travel a lot on Amtrak when we go back and forth to conferences. And something that I run into over and over and over is people that are like, are there even bookstores left or there's no bookstore in my town? And, you know, like when I'm done rattling off the list of like the 10 bookstores within 10 miles of their home, then they're like, oh, I had no idea. So like, do you encounter this through your work, this idea that like bookshops are over? Yeah, I mean, whenever I'm talking about bookshop with my family and friends who aren't book lovers and indie supporters, they're like, how are you in business? Are you, you know, aren't bookstores just like going extinct? And I'm just there sort of like, well, no. <laughs> and that's why we're here is to make sure that bookstores survive and thrive. And it's not just for bookstores as well. Bookshop is also to keep the ecosystem of books and the whole book industry, um, you know, floating. Uh, but yeah, it really does make me sad when people are like, yeah, bookstores are, how are you, how are you in business? How are people still operating bookstores? Um, it's pretty disheartening. And I actually have a friend who I used to book sell with who just opened a bookstore upstate. Uh, and I'm really excited to visit their bookstore in person, but definitely not a world I want to be in if there aren't bookstores, you know surviving and thriving. And actually we have seen that booksellers have been making it through the pandemic and book sales are actually pretty sustainable. Um, and things are looking pretty good for the industry right now, knock on wood. Uh, but I think we have to really focus as an industry, as a collective unit to really make sure that we're countering Amazon and big, big businesses who are, you know, directly cannibalizing our industry. So so speaking of the pandemic, what role, like how did that change Bookshop's role? And what role did you play? Yeah, it was, it was pretty insane. We launched late January, 2020, January 28th, 2020 to, to be exact. And then, uh, you know, I wow. had gone, I know, weird timing. I had gone to the fall regionals. I had been to PNBA. I had been to MPIBA. So I went to Portland, Denver, Providence, Rhode Island, um, Cherry Hill, New Jersey. I went to all the regionals to talk to the booksellers about Bookshop. Uh, it was hard because booksellers sometimes aren't always, especially after Amazon's dominance, aren't the most welcoming when it comes to a new site or new, new tech. So it was a real challenge to talk to them about this site that wasn't live yet but I think it went pretty well. It was okay. We had about 30 booksellers signed up with us when we launched. Then March rolled around, uh, March 13th to be exact. We all know that infamous date. And I was getting hundreds of inquiries and we boosted our uh, bookseller signed up number from about, I think it was like a hundred by March to 300 in a matter of days. So, and I actually... I got COVID at that point. So I was, I was sick and onboarding bookstores, uh, but it felt really important to help bookstores get online because a lot of them didn't have a way to sell books at all in person or online. So um, the pandemic definitely boosted the number of bookstores that we had on the site. Our sales went up significantly because because all of e-commerce was just, you know, no one else could buy anything because everything was closed. And then we also saw a significant boost in sales and um, store signups in June with George Floyd's murder and the Black Lives Matter movement and people wanting to buy anti-racist books. So um, since then, luckily, things have sort of evened out for us. Uh, we are now up to 1,300 bookstores on the site, which is great. And our sales have are steady and not exponential like they were in uh, June of 2020. And things are looking good, but we are still crazily, as you know, in a pandemic. So um, hoping that we can just sort of even out and, and feel the calm after and, you know, I guess still during the storm. But definitely pandemic made our, uh, our sales and our onboards of new stores really skyrocket. Wow. 
And so do you, do you feel, I mean, when we were at Whitmer Institute in 2020, uh, we sat with Andy for lunch actually, and I had just watched him look cowed all day long at your booth, you know, explaining it to bookstore after bookstore. And I felt really bad for him because I was just like, you know, this is an industry that is not known for being embracing or forward thinking, you know, with new ideas. But I feel like this is ultimately very good for everyone. And so do you feel like, when did you feel like that hurdle was crossed when bookstores began embracing you? Was it like March 13th or was it like June 13th? Mm, such a good question. Um, I think or that... Is it like <laughs> So excitingly, the skepticism has really evened out and um, most bookstores are super jazzed and excited about us and are really happy that we exist. Um, I think it just took time and I think, like it or not, the pandemic really made a lot of bookstores see like, hey, e-commerce isn't going away. I really needed this and y'all really helped us through some really hard times when we were closed. Um, I think the skepticism yeah, just kind of evened out, I would say, maybe mid to late 2020. Not to say that there are still booksellers who I really admire and respect who don't love Bookshop, which is totally fine. That's actually one thing I love about the industry is booksellers are fiercely independent. And if they don't like something, they're not going to hop on board. And I'm like, yes, <laughs> love it. Totally fine. Still going to shop at your store and I'm still going to love you from afar. Um but yeah, I, I would say right now, most people in the book industry are rather booksellers are actually, I mean, like looking at the ABA's numbers, there's about 1600 bookstores who have physical locations who could be on bookshop and there are 1300 who are on board with us. So wow. we have almost all the bookstores that we want to be signed up with us on board, which is great. Um, I do want to get better about, you know, showing them how to use the site a little bit better, how to maintain their page a little bit better. But uh, I do feel like the skepticism has really quelled and that people are mostly really happy that we're around to help them with online sales. I just love the idea of like e-commerce. I don't know. I feel like for so long we've kind of conflated e either like very small individual sellers or like gigantic businesses that are intentionally trying to put retail physical retail out of business so it's cool to see like a company trying to intentionally be symbiotic what is the future of this like where where does bookshop go from here as much as you another said. fun question uh we want to go a lot of places we want to do a lot of things that we think would really help the industry um it's really all a matter of what comes next so because we expanded into the UK and Spain, we really need to focus more on US site and really um, fixing the backlog of improvements that we want to improve. So like offering coupon codes for bookstores and improving affiliate dashboards and reporting for booksellers. Um, in the future, we would love to uh, possibly develop you know, bigger technology for the site that would be more easily integrated with POS systems. And, um, you know, ideally Andy, my boss, Andy Hunter, founder of Bookshop, uh, has, has really wanted the site to be able to um, integrate again with a, a bookseller's POS so that when they're just sitting in front of their computer, uh, you know, siph siphoning through online sales, that they're just saying, all right, I'm gonna fulfill this in store and this one's gonna to go to bookshop. So kind of making this really seamless um, way for booksellers to process online orders because being a former bookseller, there was almost no time to fulfill online orders in general, but especially around the holidays, it's November now. So I'm like thinking <laughs> very lovingly <laughs> towards the booksellers who I'm like, I, I tell them on a daily basis, like just siphon sales to us if you can't handle them, because I remember how awful that was. So just more more tools like that to help booksellers' lives get easier, um, making yeah an integratable POS system for online sales. We'd maybe like to um, offer eBooks in the future. We really love our eBook partner, but there's 
you know, I think room to maybe um, really improve eBooks in terms of helping them integrate with Kindles, because unfortunately a lot of people just use Kindles to read their eBooks. Um, so things like that, you know, there's other ideas that I'm not sure if I can talk about yet, but long story short, mm -hmm. a lot of new tech that we really want to um, implement in the future in 2022 and beyond. Yeah. That's exciting. Yeah. It's exciting. Yeah. And it's exciting too, to think of it because everything you're doing is forward thinking, whereas so much of, you know, we received a submission yesterday from it's, and it's written by people that are bookstore owners. And, you know, and they said, it's like really hard to explain the way the industry works and the way they are forward thinking, because to most of their customers, they're treated like they're just like stuck in the past, mm. you know? And so just to look at like the ways that they have implemented innovation can be a bit of a struggle or, you know, it, it's like the whole, how did she put it? She said something like market forces are seen as like are failing rather than like a way that we are being leveraged against, mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. I was like, and that, you know, and I feel like that is like something that bookshop has taken on enthusiastically is like mm -hmm. how to bridge that divide, you know? So how do you, you know, and, and it does seem like obviously there was a need and an interest because like your platform exploded with demand, you know, so like, you know, pandemic or not, you know, it's like the proof is in the last 18 months. But, you know, how do you feel like the reception has been from consumers? You know, have they been like, wow, this is the coolest thing ever? Or do you feel like they understand the distinction? You know, I mean, I see you being pushed on a lot of platforms with like a book review or just people that like want an alternative. Mm hmm. That's such a good question. Um, I think first and foremost, more consumers need to know about us. We've been pretty grassroots thus far um, and are mostly well known in the book industry, but beyond the book industry, I still go to you know an alumni event or a Thanksgiving with my partner and people are like, what is this? And I'm like, oh, we, we gotta do a better job about spreading the word about Bookshop because people in the book industry know Sometimes they don't, but mostly people outside of the industry don't always know who we are yet. So I think really want to get our, our word out there and spread the word about what Bookshop is, why you should be using it if you're not supporting your local ND. Um, but also something you touched on earlier, Joe, I think consumer education is something we really want to go into more. And with that, explaining how the site works in a more simple way. Um, we're developing some really handy dandy one sheets with graphics and charts so that you're like, okay, here's the book at the warehouse. It goes directly to my home. 70% of the sale goes to the bookstore or rather 30% after all the margins are taken out. Um, but I do think to your point, bookshop is a lot to explain to someone. And I, I think our whole company has understood how much it is to explain to someone. So we are getting better about like, all right, we got to develop videos. We got to have one sheets and we got to get our name out there. We got to get the word spread uh, about us. So I think that's definitely a 2022 goal. And hopefully, hopefully by this time next year, more people will be like, ah, oh, yes, I know what that is at my, you know, my family's Thanksgiving. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's when what's interesting too, because it's like you have to sort of explain the entire book industry to mm -hmm. people that just buy a book. Exactly, exactly. Right. And these and are like, and it shouldn't be their burden, but here we are. <laughs> exactly. Right. But these are also the same people who maybe are like, aren't books, you know, aren't bookstores dying? Are people still reading books? And I'm like, oh, yes, we got it. Let's sit down for an hour. Let's talk. <laughs> Right, right. Totally. So a lot, a big part of our audience on this podcast is publishers. So um, everyone from like people who work at big publishing houses to people who are thinking about self-publishing or who have been doing anything in between. Um, how does Bookshop interface with publishers? Great question. Or so um, yeah, so um, publishers can be affiliates with us on the site. So anyone can be an affiliate with us, which is great and you can earn 10% revenue 
on any purchase that comes through your page, which is double Amazon's four and a half. Yay. Uh, but we do have big publishers like Simon, Penguin, Hachette, um, smaller indie publishers who I love, like New Directions, um, who are on their site right now. But publishers, it's a really great way uh, to link out agnostically. If you don't have a favorite local indie that you really want to support, so maybe, you know, you don't live near Polina Springs in Sisters, Oregon, uh, why don't you link to Bookshop? I love Polina Springs. Lane is a good friend of mine. Uh, but Bookshop is a really great way to just link to a national map of bookstores. You're helping booksellers with every purchase across the country. Um, and then you're getting a little extra, you know, icing on the cake in addition to whatever you're making um, through the sale of the book in general. So that's another thing we really want to really help consumers understand is that affiliate networks are really popular and are not going to go away. And it's a really great way to earn a little bit of extra gravy, as our ad, ad team guy says. So um, publishers sign up with us. You can email me. Um, and it's a really great way to link if you don't have a, a favorite indie. It's a great way for your authors to link out. And it's not going to undermine our industry. And how do people contact you? You can email me at sarah.hi at bookshop.org uh, or info at bookshop.org. But yeah, you come to me, I'll, I'll direct you to the right person. Um, and sign up is super easy. It's like setting up a, a Twitter account. And then linking out is fun and making lists is fun uh, on this site. I, I make lists on my little test page all the time. And um, yeah, I, I think it's a fun, I'm biased of course, but I think it's a fun way to to support local bookstores and 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 uh, make lists and, and make a profile. Um, but I, I do really believe that this is an important way that our industry should be thinking a little more forward about um, the way that the world is changing, and that we got it. We got to adapt rather than um, be mad, if you will. That's what I say very frequently. Where I'm like, you could be mad about this, or you could pivot and react to it in mm -hmm. a way that you know creates the future that you want to see. I would hope. Exactly. Yeah. But agree. You know, sometimes people gotta work through their feelings. Yet, you know, but yeah. So, what, what, what do you feel like are the underappreciated or underacknowledged aspects of bookshop, or just the thing that you would want like most people to know that isn't being said? Hmm. I think maybe just that our whole team is really passionate about what we're doing. And we really fully believe in the future of book selling and booksellers. Um, most of us are former booksellers. Some of us are current booksellers. Most of us come from the book industry. Uh, and we really truly believe in how important books are and how important it is to read physical books and keep bookstores in communities. So I think that's just something maybe I think more people should know because I think when when people think of ah it's a big tech site which we're not even a big tech site we're 33 people uh we are humans who love books and who used to book sell or currently book sell and we really fully believe in the future of this industry um and I'm really really proud to be working with who I work but I think that's really what I'd want most people to know is that we we really love booksellers and want uh, want them to survive and thrive. I love that. Yeah, that's excellent. And I know I do feel like so much any tech company, any well, anything like what you're doing that's like new, people are going to be like, oh, those people are just trying to carve their own way. And you're like, no, nobody would go into books <laughs> for any reason other than loving books. Right. You know? Exactly. Yeah. I mean, no person that knows the industry anyway. But excellent. Anything else? Um, I feel like this has been awesome, and we're at exactly mm -hmm. 30 minutes, which mm. was exactly my dream. So Well done. Yeah. Way to dream. <laughs> I do dream of punctuality. It's a little bit embarrassing. <laughs> Me too. I love it. <laughs> <laughs>
what brought your initial meeting to pass maybe was, we, we, we saw each other and we were like that person will be in time for a meeting exactly mm -hmm. and it's worked out so far mm -hmm. um so shall we do our outro yeah right? yeah we can do our best so this has been a people's guide to publishing um our 174th episode really yeah and i am joe beal uh founder and ceo of microcosm I'm Ellie Blue, uh, marketing and editorial director here at Microcosm. And you can find us on the web at microcosm.pub. Um, on social media, at, on Twitter at Microcosm, on Instagram at Microcosm underscore pub, on Facebook at Microcosm Publishing, and in Portland, Oregon, in North Portland. But don't come to our store, it's closed. It's still closed, we're sorry. You could buy us on bookshop.org, which yeah. is the other website we intend to plug. Definitely, today. go to bookshop.org, and I don't know if you can actually find our books very easily there, if, yeah, without probably. knowing what they are. We'll work with Sarah to make that easy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, right, yes. right. We could have a second curated, we have a curated store for books that we don't distribute that we want you to buy. But we could have an additional one that's just all of our own, you know, 731 titles. You know? Yes. Let's do it. I know what I'm spending my morning doing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, thanks for joining us. And we'll Thank see you, you Joe. Next Thank you, Ellie. Thank you so much. I'm going to end the stream now. Uh, I just said I was going to end the stream on the stream. Oh. <laughs>